Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I'm going to be diving into the High Wind, the newest feature added to the game. It is a pretty nifty collection feature that will allow you to permanently increase the stats of all of your characters across the board. So today, I'm going to be diving in and taking a look at this new feature. All right, guys, so in order to access the high wind, you're going to go down here on the main screen to expeditions and right here where you would normally go to chocobos, you'll see there is this new pretty sweet icon for the high wind. All right, so if you guys are just now checking this out for the first time, essentially the high wind can be leveled up and there are different parts of the high wind that can be leveled up as well as you level up the high wind it's going to increase the capacity in which you can find exploration items. So kind of like the leveling gathering events that we have been doing so far, all right? And there's also actually a set of missions here that you can do as well in order to fully raise these up. So for the, those of you guys who are familiar with the Chocobo Expeditions for anyone that's been doing this game or playing this game for a while. It's very similar. I'm guessing that as soon as we beat these missions, it will be kind of a little rare between getting new missions. Hopefully that's not true, but I would say that clearing these missions and getting these uh, items is going to be something important to do. Now there are two important items of note here, guys. The first is going to be the paint can, and the paint cans are going to be used to upgrade the high wind right here. So as you guys can see, there's different things that you can do here, all right? So the high wind itself can be leveled up up to a total level of 70. Now, my guess is that the high wind will continue to increase in level alongside the character's max level cap. So I don't think it's a coincidence that the max level of our characters is currently level 70 and the max level of the high wind is currently level 70. So as you guys can see here, I am currently level three. It's going to cost me 4,000 gold, 110 paint cans just to get it to level four, guys. All right. Now, other aspects of it are the engine right the stabilizer and the propeller here now these parts of the high wind that you're uh enhancing are going to increase certain aspects of exploration right so the engine is going to give us more exploration item capacity the stabilizer is going to give us more paint cans obtained and the propeller is going to give her a rarity seeker rank so the rarity seeker rank is going to have to do with the boss battles that we will periodically unlock while going throughout these events so as you guys go back as you guys can see back here there are battles i already beat the first one right here oh it looks like I need a re how do I unlock this? Let's see. Unlocked at level four high wind. So essentially, as you level up the high wind, you're going to unlock these battles. And sometimes you can get a chance of unlocking a rare battle. Now, keep in mind that if you unlock a battle and you just so happen to be logging off for the game, some of these battles are going to have time limits on them. So I'm not exactly sure how long that is going to last. It could be 24 hours, it could be one hour. So just keep in mind if you guys do unlock a rare battle that you check to see how much time is left for you guys to clear it in regard. So right here, we are gonna get a power orb by getting the high wind up to level four. This is going to target all characters and boost the physical attack of all characters as well. All right, so let's go back here. Let's run over this one more time. So the engine will increase the exploration item capacity, which is linked directly down here. As you can see, my max capacity is 12 right now, right? So let's go in here and I'm just gonna collect these right here. So from two out of 12, I got 20 paint cans. I got high grade steel and I got a grindstone shard. Wow. Doesn't look like I need many more of those, let's be real. All right, other than that, guys, I uh, there are these high wind boosters right here. The way that you can get this is if you go to the shop, okay, there's this new high wind shop. I did not buy the 5K paid uh, high wind pack and I am not going to be doing this. I'm gonna be leveling this up slowly alongside with most of you guys. 
However, the 2000 paint cans right here and the 150 Astro Wind, which is going to be the rarest item that comes to the High Wind uh, enhancement, is going to be pretty nice for the whales that are going to be able to pick that up. Now, if we go down and take a look here, this is the one I bought right here. I can't really bring it up for you guys since I already purchased it, but it was the 300 paid gotcha ticket and it came with 20 of those high wind boosters. I wish that this one wasn't such crap with the two gotcha tickets, like at least 10 or 20, but two, no, I just can't. I can't support that because I don't want to see that crap. Um, so let's go back here and let's go to here and look at the 20 that I got. So. Select amount to use. Each one rewards one exploration worth of items. So if I just collected two explorations, this is gonna give me the equivalent of 20 explorations. So let's collect those right there. I got 200 paint cans. I got some healing pieces, magic pieces, attack pieces, and some other little uh, common goods right here. Now, since we did that collection, we can go back here to the high wind and I have the choice here to choose what I want to um, level up. Now, le let's get the high wind up to level four. Okay, that way we can do a battle together. We can check out the new item that I'm gonna get. All right, so a new boss enemy is spotted. All right, now I'm gonna go back here. The way that I have always played these kind of games, RPGs, is I know there's different ways. You can hyper-focus into one thing and become the best that you can at that thing. I like to play the jack of all trades route, so I'm never going to be the best in one particular area, but I am going to be balanced across the board. So for me, I'm probably going to level these up basically evenly. Paint cans is going to be really important, so I lean towards the stabilizer and then engine and then last but not least the propeller. However, we don't know how good these rare boss battles are. We know we just got one right here, so let's see. All right, so this was not the one that we just got, so I'm going to jump back over here. So let's see right here. This is going to take 30 paint cans for the engine. All right, so I'm going to increase my exploration item capacity to 13. I'll go to the stabilizer. All right, I'm going to use one of these. This is going to increase the paint cans obtained from 10 to 15. All right, so the paint cans are actually going to be very, very valuable here, guys. And then I'm also going to bump this one up as well. All right, and that's going to take it up to level three. The rarity seeker rank is going to be three. I'll probably take these all up balanced up to around five or so and then maybe i'll start to bump into certain tiers of them based on our understanding of how this is going to work over time this is going to be something that is a marathon build guys and something that you're going to be slowly doing throughout the course of this game which hopefully lasts for years and years all right so let's go back here and let's check out the battle that we just unlocked which will give us this item. And I'm gonna show you guys what to do with this item. As you guys can see right here, it only gives 0% physical attack right now. And I'm gonna show you why that is after we clear this fight. All right, so let's go here. I'm just gonna recommend this party. And we're gonna go in and very quickly take out this battle. It only has a recommended power of 30,000. So it's almost certain that I lose, but I think that we're gonna take it down anyway. All right, so we're gonna take out this flame dragon right here. Okay, I'll just jump over to Cloud. He'll use Freezing Stream and the Dragon. Wow, actually for 30,000 recommended, I was surprised that he survived that on the first go right there. I'm going to switch over to Semi-Auto so that they don't automatically use the Sigil Breakers. All right, and we're going to take down that boss. I'm guessing that these bosses over time are going to get pretty damn powerful, which I'm hoping for because I could use something that is fun to do in the side time. Um, when all the hard quests are beaten. All right, another great thing about the High Wind is that it looks like these boss battles are gonna be giving us 10,000 gil a pop, especially because I get the feeling that the High Wind is gonna be a big gold sink. So my recommendation to you guys is don't go crazy. Gold is very valuable throughout this entire game and there are very few places where you can get it in good quantity, if any, right? All right, so we did get 100 crystals. For every boss fight, you will get 100 crystals. That's fantastic to see. We got 300 paint cans right there for that fight. That's great. We got some iron metal right here, which is used to enhance the airship. And we got our power orb. All right, so it does look like we will be getting some cool items from 
Oh, it looks like we got another fight right here. This is going to give us the Tome of the Cetra, which is going to boost our magic defense and our weapon command ability potency for all characters. All right, so it looks like this one is unlocked at the High Wind at level 6. All right, so let's go over here. We did get 200 paint cans, but I don't think I'm going to be able to fully unlock it. So I'll take the High Wind to level 5. All right, and from there, I think I will... No, I'm not going to be able to get all three of these up. So I'm just going to save the paint cans for now. All right. Now I'm going to show you guys, essentially, essentially, guys, that is going to cover up the base simplicity or like the basics of the high wind. Essentially, you're just leveling up the high wind and you're leveling up these three components of the high wind, which is going to increase the amount of exploration items that you can get, the exploration capacity that you can take, the paint cans you're going to get, and the seeker in which you achieve rare battles, which I'm guessing are going to give you a fair amount of rewards. So as you guys can see, we have paint cans up here. We have the iron boards. So I'm guessing the iron boards or whatever they are. Let's see here. Let's go actually figure out what that is. All right. I can't actually click it. So let's go over to items, inventory, um where is the item let's go to exchange i don't even know where the items is guys i never oh here it is all right so high wind right here all right so we have high wind boosters which give you a exploration thing iron metal and paint cans and then astro wind which is right here now i haven't found anything that actually uses the iron uh, metal yet i would guess that it's for this part of the high wind but maybe it doesn't come in until a higher level here. So I'm just going to hold on to them for now since I can't use them at all. Now, the nice thing, the awesome thing, what is the reason we're here? Why are we building this high wind? Um, from what you've seen so far, it's essentially just to get these battles. Now, I'm going to show you guys here what the high wind really does, and it is pretty damn cool. Now, this is going to be... For whales, an incredible way to get stronger. And this is going to further increase the gap between free-to-play players and whales. Now, I know that there are some players who, as free-to-play, get upset about this. Personally, I don't understand what's to be upset about. There, this is not a PvP-focused game. And even if it was, you know, like... You're just being upset about the means in which that you have to play. You know, it's just the nature of a gotcha game. And as long as there's going to be things in here that people are going to be spending on, there's going to be a differential gap between certain kinds of players. And it doesn't in itself take away from the fun of the game. That by itself does not take away from the fun of the game. It's only in the way that we perceive the game that takes away the fun from it. So for me, even if this is going to make whales a lot stronger than my current account, which it definitely will, you know, it's not going to take away the fun for me playing Ever Crisis. Let them be strong. You know, honestly, I like watching whale runs and seeing the cool stuff in the game that I know I'm going to be able to get down the road. I've played Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. I played War of the Vision since day one. And I know that if you're a free to play player for long enough, or if you just play the game for long enough, eventually you will catch up and get all the things that you always thought you would never be able to get. It's just time, patience, and dedication, guys. All right, so I promise you it will come. All right, so this is my account. I started out, essentially this is gonna be like an account show all because you guys are gonna be able to see what I was able to build based on my account. I'm gonna show you guys in full depth right here. This is for a day one player. I started out as a full on dolphin and then transitioned to more of like a minnow slash dolphin over the time period in the months that came out. There were months where I only bought the season pass and then there were months where, you know, I would get like two of the $65 bundles or something like that, you know? So it just depends on what's there. Uh, but essentially I always go for the season pass at a minimum. And then if they have those crystal draw packs, those special ones that are pretty rare, I tend to grab one or two of those. All right. So this was what I achieved from the very first boss battle I did. It was a decorative weapon box and it came with 0% stats on it, much like this power orb. All right. So essentially once you go in here, guys, you can essentially 
enhance this and for every enhancement you do it's going to go up 0.1 percent so i was able to enhance my decorative weapon box up to 72 times right and so essentially right here it's going to progress for how many weapons you've obtained so since i've obtained 150 i was able to enhance it a bunch of times up to 150 i don't know how many times but it was a lot that i was clicking that button then you're going to have five star weapons obtained and you're going to be able to enhance it up to that then five star or it looks like ob5 weapons obtained right so i have 76 of those and then OB-10 weapons obtained, right? So obviously these OB-5 weapons count, oh no. Obviously the, yeah, the OB-5 weapons count towards the OB-10 ones as long as you took them all the way up to OB-10. And what's also gonna count for this guys, in which I think is, as you guys can see here, I have 41 OB-10 weapons, which is quite a lot. But I have played since day one and I've never missed a single event weapon, and I've always taken every single event weapon to OB-10, which makes up the vast majority of the OB-10 weapons that I have are event weapons. So for those of you that are new players coming into the game and feeling like, man, you don't have a lot of this stuff, just be patient, guys. Keep playing the game. When the free event weapons come out, don't scoff at them. Don't look at the abilities and think, this is crap. I'm telling you guys, Free event weapons are the backbone of a strong Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis account. So don't let them pass you by. Level every single one of them up. And I promise you, your account will start to slowly get stronger. That is the foundational block of building the pyramid of a strong account in this game. All right, so I'm going to show you guys right here. Now, once you enhance everything that you can on each one, so I'll show you guys like uh okay for cloud right here i can enhance one more clouds one hit max damage all right is ten thousand. this wasn't here when i just oh this is the new one that i just got okay so this is the power orb it started at zero percent physical attack all right and i'm going to show you all the different ways that i can level it up clouds one hit max damage for me my record is twenty nine thousand one hundred sixty eight. i don't know how that's possible i guess that this does not count any of the past battles that I've done. All right, so obviously this is going to only uh, go up based on once you unlock this enhancement thing, you're gonna need to break whatever level it is. All right, so as you guys can see, I can't enhance it anymore with any of my other characters. And to be honest, I'm not gonna go out and start trying to do one hit max damage with every single one of my characters. You're getting very small incremental percentages that over time are going to greatly strengthen your account. But can you go out there and in one day greatly strengthen your account? No, and I think that if you do that, it's gonna be a huge time sink and the amount of, uh, percent that you're going to get out of it at the end of the day is probably going to be rather little unless you've been playing all the way from the beginning of the game and if on top of that you've been spending money on the game all right so that being said let's jump over and i'll show you guys each of the things well actually i can just show you guys the list all but i'll, sh I'll go through them really quick for all of you guys i've gotten the greatsword one to 14 firearms to 11 secret of martial arts 13 magic arts 14 Secrets of the Feral 11, Ninjutsu 11, Musical Arts 2, that's Kate Sith, so very low on him, Greatsword 13, Will of the Katana 14, Will of the Blade 10, Will of the Bayonet 12, and lastly Will of the Rifle 9. Each one of these books is going to represent a different character in the game. We have Cloud, we have Barret, we have Tifa, Aerith, Red 13, Yuffie, Kate Sith, and then these, I believe... Um, oh no, this is actually Zack right here. This is Zack. Here we have Sephiroth, Glenn, Matt, and Lucia, right? So they're directly correlated to which characters you guys have built up in the game. Now, for those of you that play, like I said, I like a balanced account. So I'm never going to be that kind of player that's going for OB10, essentially on any banner. If you drop an Advent Children banner in this game, guys, maybe, maybe but that's it. I don't need to have OB10. You do not need it to clear content in this game, except for maybe some rare crash battles. And even then, limited weapons are the only ones that you would really need to go out of your way to get OB10 on, because anything that's on the wish list, you will eventually get OB10 with time. All right. Now, 
as you guys can see, certain stats are allocated to different characters' books, right? So for Cloud, he's going to get physical attack and limit ability potency. For uh, Barrett, HP and magic attack, Tifa, physical attack, physical defense. Now, what I like about what they did about this is that a lot of these overlap. So for example, right, if you never played, let's say, Red 13, right? Red 13 has physical attack and healing, right? Now, if you never played Red 13 and you were never going to level up any of these things from him, right? You can still get physical attack from Cloud, right? You can still get physical attack from Tifa. You can get healing from Aerith, right? You can get physical attack from Yuffie. Uh, what else we got? Physical attack from Zack right here. And, oh, also Glenn. And then lastly, I think there's only one person that gets healing. That's actually pretty surprising. Is that only Aerith that gets healing? Let's go through this. Oh, no, 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 no. Red 13 and Aerith, it looks like, are the only ones that are dedicated to healing. And I'm guessing that this is going to maybe show the progression of these characters in the game. Like maybe Red 13 will become our next big healer. But it does look like for healing stat, you are going to want to have at least some Red 13 build or Aerith. Now, I'm guessing most people are building Aerith, so it's not going to be a problem. But like I said, let's look at uh, let's look at another one. Boost limit ability potency. And you'll see that it's at least shown twice somewhere, right? So here it is again on Zack and Cloud. They have the exact same thing. If we go over to Will of the Blade, HP physical attack, HP is also up here on Barret. So there are multiple ways to fill this out, even if you're not building all of the characters. However, that being said, you are going to get characters' weapons slowly throughout the, the point of playing this game. On the wish list, you don't always get what you want. Sometimes you're going to want a Tifa glove and you're going to get a Lucia rifle. Now, in the spare time, if you guys have extra mats, you can slowly start to level up these weapons. You can take that Lucia rifle up to level 50, right? Because if you take that weapon up to level 50, you can get part of the boost materia command ability potency here because you're going to get points for every Lucia weapon that you get up to level 50 every time you get one up to level 70, level 90, and level 120, right? So for Lucia, I basically have nine weapons at level 50, seven at level 70, one at level 90, and zero at level 120, right? If I go over here to Matt, I have 10 at level 50, 10 at level 70, two at level 90, and none at level 120. You know, if I go over here to Glenn, I got 10 at 50, 10 at 70, zero at 90, and zero at 120, right? But then certain characters like Sephiroth, for example, I have obviously the cap on 50 and 70, then I have seven weapons at level 90, but zero at level 120. As of right now, I think I only have one level 120 weapon in the game. Like I said, I'm not building them unless I actually need it to clear content, and so therefore I'm not just spending my mats in a way that's not actually effective for clearing content in the game. I know that you could say, oh I love this sword, but then you bump that sword up to level 120 and then for some reason everything that comes out in the next six weeks you can't use that sword you know and so then you need to level something else up and that's why i say you should let the game dictate what you're building rather than what you personally want to do however if that's the way that you enjoy the game go ahead have at it have fun the game is a game at the end of the day and that's what we're here to do is have some fun that's just my opinion on how approaching the game i think will be easier in the long run all right so now if i go here to effects you guys can see that as a day one player as a minnow slash dolphin or more like a dolphin slash minnow as a little dolphin right you can see that my hp is at 1.1 percent my physical attack has been boosted 3.1 percent magic attack 2.6 my physical defense is at 0.8%, magic defense 0.7%, and my healing is at 1.4%. My abilities are back here, so my boost weapon command ability potency is boosted by 7.2%, my materia command ability potency by 1.3%, and my boost limit ability potential by 2.5%. So as you guys can see, it's, it is a small amount that over time is going to increase to obviously something that's really going to power up your characters. And I, I honestly really like how this works. 
I don't think that there's any need to spend on the high wind. I think that you can totally build this up over time. Even if you're a Southeast Asia player and you just started playing and you're feeling a little bit down because you don't have these stats yet, I promise you just stay in the game. The more banners you slowly pull, the more things you slowly level up, eventually these things are gonna start to take effect and you're gonna see the change in your account. But even now, if I were to go out and fight something with my team, I doubt I would see very much of a change with anything. So this is something that's gonna slowly be affected over time. So that's gonna basically cover the collections here, guys. Um, these are different kinds of collection items, these power orb and the decorative weapon boxes. These build only a specific thing. The decorative weapon box will only boost weapon command ability potency. The power orb will only boost physical attack. And then we have the individual character books right here that boost different stats. So I do recommend coming back here over time, building up your high wind, leveling it up as much as possible, getting these rarer artifacts with the single stats on them, but then slowly building up all the other books over time. And I think it's going to be something fun for us to do. All right, guys. Well, to be honest, I think that's basically going to cover it. I don't have any of the aerosol, so I can't... Um, use any but i'll show you guys what they're for so if you go here into any of these items so if i go to enhance you can click over boost right here and you can do it on any of these books right now probably weapon command ability potency is one of the best ones to use it on um, and it does look like you get a boost to not only yeah it looks like over boosting it is going to take the star up to kind of like ob1 right so every single one of these things right they're all five star but i'm guessing that every single one of these books and every single one of these artifacts can go up to ob10 so just imagine the extent of power that's going to come to an account that has all of these things at ob10 this is i'm talking this is going to take like years guys it, at least yeah years i'm guessing at least so We'll have to see where this goes. I don't mind that it's going to take a long time. I don't have any of the, um, what are these called? The Astro Winds in order to show you guys. But you can see here that by overboosting it, my weapon command ability potency is going to go from 7.2% to 7.9%. So it is a pretty big bump. That's 0.8% right there. Or no, 0.7%. So pretty solid, almost a full percent. But yeah, that's basically going to cover it, guys. If you guys have any more questions, if there's something I missed out, please drop it in the comments so that other people can read it so that we can all grow as a community together of people that love this game and want to support the game. And most of all, want to support each other, just having fun out there, killing stuff, being reminded of the good old days of Final Fantasy when we were kids, you know, whether it was six, seven, eight, nine, four. Whatever it was that you guys loved, 10, 12, 15 even. Anyways, guys, I'm pretty excited about this. If you guys enjoyed this video today, don't forget to drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future content. That being said, I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.